Hi, welcome to VS Garage. On this one, see, you see this here? This used to be a straight piece of pipe. Build it all from scratch, colder intake, baby. Let's go. Let's build an intake tube. So I kind of want like a cold air system because it could be quite easy just to take this filter and slap it on the end of here and call it good. I don't want that. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to make it more complicated for myself. You already saw the end goal, but uh, I don't know how I'm going to get there yet. I kind of know, but it's going to involve a lot of pie cuts and a lot of welding. So I basically, I want it to come up off of here, come down and then shoot out this hole down here and have the filter down in here, kind of like this. Plenty of room, nice cold air intake. Um, I think I'm gonna make it out of two pieces. I'm gonna do this piece that comes up and then comes straight up and then have that quick clamp, or the Wiggins clamp here. That's where that sucker's gonna go. And then build off of the inlet here, throttle body, come off and then meet the two. Um, I think it'd be easier that way. That way you're not kind of like guessing from point A to point B. It's, they meet somewhere in the middle. Um, just thinking out loud how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to get going on some pie cuts. So I can make this first section here. And then kind of end it here. And then make this section here. So yeah, pie cuts, let's go. The Fabricator series has a great tutorial on how really how to do these pie cuts, lobster cuts, whatever you want to call it. But the end result... Um, I'm going to go for this. I'm doing a nine degree, so it's 18 total. So 18 times five is what class? 90, that's right. So that'll give me a really tight 90 degree bend when it's all welded up and then it gives you an ability to kind of clock it to play with it in order to make whatever curves you need to make. To start out, I took my four inch pipe, laid it, clamped it on the, the desk here, measured up two inches, marked my lines, or uh, mark my marks on each end. Took a straight edge or piece of aluminum angle works out great because you can, it just basically caps over the top of it. Make sure that you're flush and then draw a straight line on both sides because when you make this cut, you rotate it around. I measure up two inches from here to here to make sure it's exactly on the opposite plane and then make another cut. And then you just keep going all the way down. I'm gonna clean up my cuts with uh, this deburring tool or a grinder, however, um, extensive they may be um and yeah let let the chop saw do the work this is a just a metal chop saw that i have works out awesome for all my projects definitely pick one up if you plan on doing this because it makes your life so much easier than trying to like cut it by hand don't even it takes so much time i've done that before too not worth it in my opinion um yeah so let's make a bunch of cuts let's make a bunch of pie pieces and then start piecing this thing together so here's the start of it. As you can see, I'm not, it's just, it makes it so nice to be able to like curve down around up and over. So, but this is getting a little bit too heavy for the tape. So I'm going to pull this apart. I'm going to tack this all together because I know that this is a nice solid start. So I have plenty of room now above the alternator belt. And then basically I just got to build off from there to go down. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to pull this apart, just tack it up. So I made a couple changes to this before I went ahead and tacked everything up, but it is tacked and it's one piece ish <laughs> obviously i gotta fill in all these i try to make my tacks where nobody can see them um so that i can do my best welds on the top side bottom side don't really care about but i really like how the fat section here is like right in line with the alternator so now i basically got to complete this 90 to go straight down and i think i'm on a pretty good path of doing that because this is this is level with this so that's like perfect which means like literally it just has to be a straight 90 straight 90 a 90 90 um yeah so let's get these pieces on here get that tacked up and maybe just like go ahead and fully weld this piece out and then work off from that piece but yeah let's yeah weld this all That was so much welding. 
like so, so much. I finally got the hang of it, of course, like towards the end. Uh, the top size look kind of the less ugliest, I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say the prettiest. I'm gonna say the less ugliest. Aluminum welding is very difficult. I'm not gonna lie, but it's sealed up. It works. It's one solid unit now, so which is you know awesome. And now I can build off of this. But like I said, like that was so much freaking welding. Like no wonder why people charge an arm and a leg for this kind of stuff because it just takes forever. And like almost almost all my argon's gone. Like that big tank. It was half of it, took half of it. But that was kind of my fault too, because I didn't move. Finally, I figured out like, you gotta move quick, like real quick, once you get the hang of it. You can't just sit there um, and bake the part, just heat and dab, heat and dab. So yeah, awesome. I might make a standoff to go from here to here, just to kind of like isolate it a little bit better. But I mean, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But it turned out pretty cool. I like it. Um, yeah, now let's work on the bottom section. So the filter that comes up and then the 90 that goes up. I have the majority of the base piece all tacked together. And this is where this Wiggins clamp is gonna come into key because it allows enough play and movement that I don't have to be exactly on in order to make these two meet up. So I have one end of the Wiggins clamp welded to the base. I'm just resting this other one on top and I'm taking some measurements from where this kind of is to where it kind of meets up. And then that will determine how much length I need to cut for pipe. And then I'll weld it on here and then weld that on there. And they should connect up and this still should be able to slide through the hole. I still got to put a couple more ends on there in order to slip this on. Um, but I just want, I want to get the Wiggins clamp section done first. I got both pieces, the bottom piece and the top piece. They, like I showed before, made up perfectly. I got the little extensions on the end of there so I can put the filter on it after it goes through the hole in the front of the firewall there. Um, yeah, so now I just gotta, I'm gonna finish weld all this out and then maybe make some mounting brackets to mount to the frame somehow or like the core support in order to keep it all steady. And there we go, all welded up. Had to grind down <laughs> the welds on this section because this is the section that goes through the hole up in the front. And then, um, it just because it's such a tight, tight fit inside there, it's gonna work out awesome. Um, I did go through a whole bottle of shielding gas, so I gotta go pick up some more of that tomorrow. Not that that's gonna matter for this project, but I think I think it's time to assemble this. Let's assemble it all and see how it looks. There we go, a custom intake tube all mounted up. This, not gonna lie, a little ghetto. It's just a strap that I utilized one of the screw holes that used to be there in order to strap this and hold it nice and tight and down so it doesn't wiggle around. But that's really the only way I can do it because that piece has to slide in and there's no way for me to attach something to the outside of it because it won't slide in. So I think I'm gonna come back on this and probably paint all this black to help kind of hide it um, or build some kind of like shield right here so you don't really see it. But yeah, it's a, it's, it's literally not going anywhere and it has, you know, just enough wiggle room everywhere else. That um, Wiggins clamp came in clutch right there. So awesome. Custom intake. Yeah, I am going to go ahead and paint it um, eventually, but I'm just leaving it raw for right now because i got to take it out a few times because I want my, all my relays and stuff for the fans right up in there to hide them. But yeah, how freaking sweet is that? Custom cold air intake. Only took me a whole Saturday. No, it's Sunday. Oh my gosh, it's Sunday. That's how lost I am sometimes with doing this stuff. Forget what day it is. Awesome. There we go. Custom cold air intake for a 1950 Chevy with an LSA in it. LSA-ish. It's got a blower with some LS. It's a truck engine. Who's counting? Not me. It's going to make loud noises and lots of tire smoke. That's all that counts, right? Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Got a lot more coming up, including exhaust. I think that's the next thing I'm going to tackle. I have everything like literally laid out in front of me right here. It's going to be awesome. Stainless steel, X-pipe, rowdy, rowdy, rowdy. That's what I'm going for. I want, I want it to shoot flames. 
like out the side when I hit that two-step. So that's going to be an awesome one. Don't miss it. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Yeah.